Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, April 23rd. On today's show, we look back once more at how the LifeQuest Aquatic Center came together over the last six months. But first, a quick preview of all of today's exciting events. Representatives from The Walking Company will be on hand to discuss the importance of good, solid footwear. Whether you're an exerciser or just want something comfortable to stand in. It's called Step Into the Right Shoe, and it happens this morning at 10.15 a.m. in the Social Center on the island. The Village Church hosts a special event today. It's called Coffee with the Pastors. Come learn more about the people that minister at the Village Church and ask any question you like in this informal setting. All are welcome, whether you're a churchgoer or not this afternoon at 1.15 in the church hospitality room. And later this afternoon, it's time for Shell Point's version of Family Feud, which we are calling Friendly Feud. Cheer on your friends and neighbors as they compete for the big prize. Survey says you're guaranteed a good time at Friendly Feud this afternoon at 2.15 in the social center on the island. Now, we also have this note from our transportation department. They go to great lengths to give residents options for transport, whether you're just headed down the street, to another neighborhood, or to destinations outside the community. Now, for many years, one popular destination has been the Southwest Florida Symphony Concerts at Barbara B. Mann Performing Arts Hall in Fort Myers. However, since the symphony began visiting Shell Point, Fewer and fewer people are utilizing this bus service to go off campus to the symphony. And if people don't use it, it may be discontinued. If you regularly buy symphony tickets and need transportation to and from Barbara B. Mann, you need to sign up as soon as possible for the next season, or else the service may be discontinued. Call the Island Service Desk at 454 2282 or the Woodland Service Desk at 454-2054 to sign up. Now, let's talk about the new LifeQuest Aquatic Center. During this busy visitor season, hundreds of residents and their guests are taking advantage of the beautiful new swimming pool, hot tub, and therapy pool with regular aquasize classes. One feature that was missing, though, was shade, which is a big deal in our Florida sunshine. We now have installed large shade sails so that you can exercise in comfort or just sit in the shallow end and enjoy the beauty. So whether you like hanging out in the sunshine or would enjoy sitting in the shade, we now have something for everyone at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Now, as many of you know, we had a time-lapse camera filming the Aquatic Center as it was being built. By popular demand, we are replaying our construction documentary showing how the LifeQuest Aquatic Center came to be. Hi everybody, it's Jared Pike here with Shell Point TV. With me is Bob Southern, the Director of Project Development. And today, we're going to look at footage that we've shot of the Aquatic Center, the LifeQuest Aquatic Center, as it's being built. We're gonna start with the very first step after the old island pool closed. So you had to tear out all of this vegetation. Yeah, this machine is, uh, when it's run by a, a good operator, uh, can be very particular in how it works. Uh, I mean, it grabs and it can grab specific items and it can work in a way that separates materials uh, and they use it in that way to separate parts of a building that can be recycled from parts of a building that just have to be trashed. So in this particular case, they're just removing palm trees, but when um, a building is being torn down, they can separate the metals that they can sell and make money from the stuff that just goes to the dump. So a good operator uh, uses that in a way that uh, is really interesting to watch and it almost like, works like a hand and a thumb. Hmm. Talk about why uh, digging out of that soil was such an important part of the process. Well, back in the uh, early 
days of the construction of Shell Point and back in those days in the mid-1960s, vegetation that was on a site was often just knocked over, perhaps sometimes burned, but was not removed. And uh, fill was brought in and just placed on top of it. Well, that vegetation over time turned into a substance similar to peat moss, and it was very compressible. So you had a, um, a substance under there that was often several feet thick that was like a sponge that you could uh, mash down. So it created a situation where buildings would mash that loamy uh, substance down and settle. And that is not a good thing for buildings, which creates settling floors, cracking walls, and other problems that we have seen in a number of the earlier buildings uh, that were constructed at Shell Point. It's often referred to as muck. <laughs> and it smells like muck when you dig it up. You know you're digging it up because it smells bad. That's a technical uh, term. That's a very technical <laughs> construction term. Uh, but you dig down to it uh, and you remove it and you, bring, you dig down to the point where you get down to good, clean soil underneath of it. And uh, <clears throat> you haul it off and you bring good, clean, compactable fill back in and you compact it as you fill the hole where it came out of and you build it up to the level that you're going to build on. Now that's not bad soil, it's a good topsoil and we do use that in perimeters of, of projects and, and in places as a, a topsoil. Uh, so we didn't just waste it. But, but it's it, not it, a good it, foundation. It's not a good foundation, it's not compactable. We went down and got it out of there. Well let's orient people. Right now we're looking from the second floor of the guest house. This is where our camera was located and it took a picture every 30 seconds for six months. So we documented the entire construction process. And right now, Bob, can, we, can you describe kind of what stage the construction is in at this very beginning of the video? Yes, and uh, you're looking over the uh, construction superintendent's uh, little trailer there. And this is at the point where the muck has been removed and uh, we're just starting to pour the, uh, try to pour the foundation on the left hand uh, portion of the picture where the pool house is gonna go. And uh, this was back in the summer and it was raining a lot back then, you may remember. And we were trying to prepare for the concrete pour. And I think the, the guys actually did it like four or five times because every time they get the site ready for concrete, we get a heavy rain and wash out all the, the, the soil that was there ready for concrete. So it, it took a better part of a week on what should have been a day's work, worth of work to get that ready for concrete. And that was one of the reasons that the job was late or later to finish in the other end because of those heavy rains we had during last summer. It is the rainy season anyway, yes. but this was particularly and bad. Especially heavy rain time. Yeah. Now, so they're preparing the building on the left. Now, the building on the right, what is that? The building on the right is a, a combination storage for uh, uh, chairs and tables and whatnot on one side, and uh, pool equipment, chemicals, pumps, filters, that kind of uh, equipment out there. So they poured the concrete, they poured the footers, and I see they've got blocks there. Tell me what these guys are doing. These are the, the block masons, the guys with the really big arms. You hardly have to speed up this film for that because those guys are just quick. Uh, and they know what they're doing when you get good ones and they lay block in a hurry. And when they get in and get going, uh, they'll have a wall uh, up for you very quickly. And uh, so they're blocking the, the main uh, exterior walls of the building and any interior walls that also need to be blocked and getting it up to the point where you, you're ready to uh, form out and pour the tie beam around the top of the block and then getting re ready for the roof trusses. Now in the meantime, I see stakes going up kind of where the, uh, the main pool is going to be. What, uh, the hole isn't dug yet, is it? No, the hole isn't dug. They start to lay out the site and determine where uh, the pool is going to go and what the shape is going to be and where uh, a lot of the underground piping needs to go. There is a, a network of, of pipes that bring water in, take water out, uh, move it from the, the scuppers and the main drains at the bottom of the pool. Mm. So there's a, a large network of pipes under there and there's a huge support system 
of reinforcement steel that has to be established uh, to hold the concrete shell in place to try to make sure you don't ever have any settlements or cracks in that uh, shell. Obviously, a crack in a building is bad. A crack in a pool is real bad. So um, the, the, the steel and then the reinforcement steel, how and where it's placed, is critical. And they had to do this process for several different pools. It wasn't just one pool. Yes, we actually had uh, two full pools and, and the uh, hot tub out there. And uh, the main pool um, had a very interesting shape with uh, its uh, lap pools and its deeper swimming area and uh, the kind of the, the throat that connected those two. And then it also had the, the zero entrance feature. So it was a multi-faceted pool in, it, in itself. And then the, the uh, exercise slash therapy pool uh, had the interesting ramp that went into that pool. So it had a, a very uh, a, a neat, interesting feature in itself and uh, had a lot of steel and concrete in that also. So there was a lot of layout work to get all that steel in working in and around all those pipes and water movement pipes so that you need to get the water in and water out. I want to bring people's attention to the right here, this little bobcat that's moving dirt. What are they doing here? They have to create places to put um, the water that fills into the pool holes. Uh, the, the groundwater is very close to the surface here in the island at Shell Point. You can practically take a soup spoon and dig down a few inches and get water. So when you're digging a hole that you have to build in, you've got to be constantly pumping water out of that hole. So in order to do that on this site, we created a retention pond. And from the, the pool hole sites, we were pump, pumping the water from the pool into these retention ponds uh, that were temporary in nature. We couldn't get a permit to just dump this water out into a storm drain and out into the canals, so we had to keep it on site. So you're managing both dirt and water. Dirt and water, <laughs> that's correct. Now let's talk about what's happening here. They're digging the hole for? For the hot tub. And then I see wooden forms going up in the exercise pool. That's right. They're starting to shape that, uh, the sides of that pool and uh, working on the, the steel, that, uh, the reinforcement steel that will, that will um, hold that concrete in place. Okay, and now I see them really going to town on the main pool digging out the hole. Yes, and they're still pumping water into those retention areas. And then here's the trusses. So a lot of things are happening around the site at once, a lot of coordination. You see a lot of trucks and people coming and going. It's a tight spot and a lot was going on and the superintendent on the site had to make sure everybody played nice and got along and did their work with a minimum of um, knocking heads in the process. Uh Let's take a look at building this, uh, this cupola here. We designed a fairly elaborate little roof feature, the, the cupola and um, uh, the, the structure to accommodate that. And the guys are, are finishing the basic roof structure. And then they start working on that cupola, uh, the structure of that feature. And it, uh, it had some openings in it and places for uh, light and air to move through it. The entire aquatic center deserved a nice little feature right there at its entrance. So that's, that's why we put the, the time and effort into that building and that roof design. So this shot, Bob, this, I happen to know this started at four in the morning, <laughs> uh, pouring concrete for the main pool. Talk about this day. Well, uh, often when you're pouring concrete, uh, particularly um, in the summertime or when it's hot, You've got to start early and try to get the bulk of the work done before it gets very hot uh, so that it doesn't set up too quickly. And let's, uh, let's describe for people this gunite process. Describe, because this isn't just mixing concrete and pouring it. They're actually shooting it out of a gun. Yes, they are. You can see there it comes out. Uh, again, it's very dry, uh, and they, sh they are controlling this hose and it comes out of the truck, the truck very dry, and they build it up. Um, and they just keep spraying in the same area and building it up and building it up until it covers the reinforcement steel and it gets out to the, 
the, uh, the, the thickness that they want it. And you can see all the steel there that they have to cover. And it takes a good while to do that. And after it gets out close to where they want it, then they have some finished guys work it a bit to, to give it kind of the, the, the final shape that they want. It is difficult work and it it's, um, takes a lot of strength and a lot of endurance and it's, that machine doesn't quit and it's, it doesn't let up and there's not easier times. It just keeps shooting that concrete. So while that happened and, and now the concrete forms are set up, here we have the roofing material here. It's like a jigsaw puzzle almost. Yeah, uh, this is a, a type of metal roofing that's been used in Florida or something very similar to it for a long time. And it has an old Florida look to it. Uh, and the pieces are cut and fit as, as you, uh, you uh, follow along the roof edges. And then they have some cap pieces that go with it. And uh, these guys are, are very um, experienced in what they do to make those pieces uh, fit and cut them to fit and make sure that we don't have leaks in the design, but it's a very reliable roof that lasts for a lot of years. Tune in tomorrow for part two of our documentary on the construction of the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. For now, let's talk about all of Wednesday's happenings from Resort Services. Then stay tuned for your menu options and Village Church connections. Happy Wednesday, everyone. You're here with Leslie Brand and Bev Chanley, and we're here to go over all the activities going on at Shell Point today. We're going to start bright and early at 7.45, men's Bible study in the Osprey Room. 8 o'clock, men's match play doubles tennis at the tennis courts. 8.45, Lily and Company Jewelers for their weekly jewelry service in the Resident Activity Center. 9 o'clock is the Jurassic Travel in the Egret Room. Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton will meet in the Art Studio at 9 o'clock. And at 9.15, the Card Making and Scrapbooking Group will be in the Tarpon Room. 10 o'clock is the ladies' Bible study in the Osprey Room. Also at 10 o'clock is the men's match play doubles tennis at the tennis courts. And we have a health connection, a step into the right shoe at 10.15 in the social center. Sign up is required. 10.15, model yacht sailing will be in the Commons Lake at the Woodlands. 11.30, health connections, agility and flexibility in the health club. That class is currently full. Now here's Beth for the afternoon activities for today. Thanks, Leslie. We're going to start today at 1 o'clock with chess being played in the library lounge. Then at 1.15, we have coffee with the pastors. That'll be in the hospitality room of the Village Church. 1.30 to 3.30, you can get one of the last train room tours of the year, so head on down to the tunnel. At 1.45, we have a Health Connections class. This one is Balance and Mobility Training Level 1. That's in the health club and that's currently full. At 2.15, it's time for a friendly feud. That's at the social center. You can participate or you can just go watch. It's a lot of fun. At 2.30, we have jazz and stuff in the Grand Cypress Room down at the Woodlands. At 3 o'clock, we have the Bible study in the King's Crown Community Room. And at 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connections class, Pilates Stretch. That'll be in the health club on the island. At 3.30, we have another Health Connections class, Aqua Agility and Conditioning. That's in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. That's currently fall. At 4.30, we have Indoor Bocce in the Health Club. 5.45 is the time the church choir rehearsal will be at the Village Church. And we round out tonight at 7.15 with Prayer and Praise at the Village Church. Well, we're happy to see you here today, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is herb roasted chicken with mashed Yukon gold potatoes and zucchini. The dinner special is the pasta buffet for $12.95, and the soup of the day is minestrone. In the island cafe for lunch on Wednesday, the special is bacon, turkey, and Swiss panini with fresh fruit for $7.25. The dinner special is fried shrimp for $8.25. Dinner specials in the palm grill on Wednesday are snapper papillote for $17.95, or fried oysters for 
Um, and these are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods, Minister of Worship and Music at the Village Church. And it is my special privilege to announce to you that the Centurymen will be sharing special music during the morning worship service at the Village Church this Sunday, April 27th at 10.15 a.m. The Centurymen are known for sharing the gospel of Christ through music. Established in 1969, the Centurymen is an auditioned men's chorus of professional Christian musicians who are ministers of music, concert artists, college faculty members, and outstanding music leaders from across America. The Centurymen have performed concerts around the world. They've been the performing artists for the Dove Awards telecast, and they've been nominated for a Grammy Award. But more importantly, this 70-member men's chorus consists of some 70 men who sing to God with conviction, passion, and purpose. Even NBC News has named them the finest male chorus in America. Originally directed by Dr. Burl Redd, the founding music director and conductor, this 70-voice audition men's chorus is now directed by Dr. Charles Fuller, who is nationally known for his choral work, outstanding musical leadership, and expertise. The Centurymen will be accompanied by the acclaimed pianist Joseph Hobart and organist Cindy Fuller, and they will feature the beautiful vocal artistry of Renee Peters Hobart. Recently, our guests Stephen Nielsen and Ovid Young said to me that there cannot be a better men's chorus in the world. The Centurymen's collective sonority, their ability to whisper or roar, with equal beauty and finesse, and their obvious musical and spiritual commitment to the wide range repertoire they sing. All these traits make the Centurymen a unique phenomenon on today's musical landscape. I've also heard that Cliff Barrows has said that nothing is more exciting and inspiring than the singing of a male chorus under superb training and conducting. For the finest in your listening pleasure, it's a privilege to commend to you the Centurymen. I invite you to attend the Village Church this Sunday, April 27th at 1015, and enjoy the music ministry of the Centurymen as they share their inspirational music ministry as part of our morning worship service. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we learn how a chicky hut is built and plenty of other fascinating insights into the construction of the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, April 23rd. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.